IFR flying is packed with minimum altitudes to learn about. Most are depicted on a low and route chart, like this one near Omaha, Nebraska. The off-route obstruction clearance altitude, Aroka, is designed for altitude planning on routes that aren't along published airways or procedures. In this quadrant, bounded by the lines of latitude and longitude, the Aroka is 4,000 feet. If you're planning an IFR flight through this quadrant off a published route, you should plan an altitude of at least 4,000 feet. If all this looks familiar from private pilot training, it's because it's similar to the concept of the maximum elevation figure, or MEF. On a sectional chart, we also break the area into quadrants, but they're smaller than the one on the IFR chart. Here, four sectional quadrants make up the area of the IFR quadrant. Each one has its own MEF. They're all different, and the highest one is 3,000 feet, significantly lower than the 4,000 foot Oroka. Taking a closer look at that 3,000 foot quadrant, we'll see what's driving the higher figure. Both MEFs and Orokas are based on the highest point in the quadrant. Here, that point is this obstruction, which is 2,836 MSL. It's a radio tower north of this highway and is more than 1,000 feet tall. So that radio tower is the highest point in both this VFR sectional quadrant as well as the larger low and root chart quadrant. So the same tower is generating two different figures for the MEF and the Aroka. Here's how it's calculated. In the Aeronautical Chart User's Guide, which you can find on the FAA website, the first rule deals with when a man-made object like this radio tower is clearly the highest obstacle in the quadrant. The radio tower is 2836 MSL. We'll take this elevation then and add a possible vertical error, which is typically 100 feet. This sums to 2936. Then we round to the next highest 100 feet, and that's our MEF, 3,000 feet. Here's what happens if that highest obstacle isn't a radio tower, but a natural feature like a mountaintop. Again, we start with the terrain elevation, then add a 100 foot vertical error allowance. Now though, we also add a 200 foot allowance for uncharted objects, which might not have made it on. Our sum is 3126, and we'd round to the next highest 100 to get our MEF of 3200 which is what it would be if that highest feature was terrain and not the radio tower, which it actually is. So that's the MEF. How is the Aroka calculated? It's done very similarly to the MEF, only instead of just the 100 foot buffer for vertical error, we do an additional 1000 feet in non-mountainous terrain and 2000 in mountainous to accommodate the IFR requirement that a minimum altitude give you this obstacle protection. So adding 1000 to the MEF gives us the Aroka of 4000 MSL. And that's the real difference between the MEF and the Aroka. The Aroka is a regulatory altitude. When you're IFR en route, you're required to maintain at least 1,000 or 2,000 feet of obstacle clearance, depending on the area. The Aroka is designed to let you adhere to that rule. The MEF is not regulatory. You still need to maintain VFR minimum altitudes at all times. But flying at 3,000 feet, the MEF here, right on top of that 2,800 foot tower, would be a violation of 91119 minimum safe altitudes. So the MEF is just designed to stop you from smacking into anything, not necessarily to comply with the regs.